Hi everyone, my name is Manal al Faiz and you're watching From Scratch. On today's episode, what we're making are spice mixes from scratch. We have two different spice mixes that we're gonna cover for today, one that is sweet and one that is savory. We're gonna start off with our sweet spice mix and what we have for today is a spice mix that we're gonna create from very scratch. You could always start from whole pieces of spices, but I find it easier to use with pre-ground. So all we have over here is some ground ginger, some ground cinnamon, some ground cloves, together with some ground nutmeg. What we're gonna do is simply start with mixing all four together in a bowl. And you could do this ahead of time, maybe even a few days ahead of time, and always whip it up whenever you need it. So it's super simple, very easy. Just the four spices you're gonna mix together to make something known as a pumpkin spice mix. So. The reason why we're making a pumpkin spice mix for today is because we're actually gonna make cupcakes uh, that are spiced with this spice mix to make a pumpkin spiced latte cupcake. So it's really delicious. It's perfect for this time of the year. It's, it's just wonderful. So I'm just gonna quickly give those a mix just to make sure everything is homogenous and mixed together. And then we could go ahead with starting the actual batter for the cupcake. And I'm just gonna set this aside for now. What I'm gonna do in my planetary mixer is actually add in my butter together with my sugar to start something known as the creaming method. So in goes my butter, and in goes my sugar. Make sure you got all that sugar and all the butter that is measured out using a scale into your mixer. So. I'm gonna let that go and start mixing to start something called the creaming method. So what I just uh, completed was something called the creaming method. So the creaming method comes into several steps. The first step is adding in your butter and your sugar and letting that mix in your mixer for quite a, a good amount of time, just so that sh the sugar crystals have started to bloom into the butter and your mixture looks a bit different. It looks light and fluffy and it looks a bit white in color. So I'm gonna keep this going until I achieve that color and then I'm gonna add in my eggs. So once you initially have all of those pieces of butter broken down together with the sugar and you've noticed that the color is starting to change, what you're gonna add next is the eggs and we're adding two eggs all at once. And we're gonna slowly start the mixer. It's very important that from time to time you wash down or, or let's say scrape down the edges of your bowl with a scraper just because uh, your machine doesn't or it can't really get those corners of your machine. So you wanna help it out a bit. Scrape down the corners from time to time. And this is where room temperature butter is also very, very, very important. 
This will help with uh, starting off the creaming process. So my mixture looks light and fluffy in texture and it's starting to look a bit lighter in color as well. What I'm gonna go ahead and add next is our pumpkin puree. Do keep in mind that this is a pumpkin spiced latte cupcake. Uh, so you do wanna add in the flavors that you do call it. So I'm just adding in the pumpkin puree right inside. You wanna again get all the components inside your mixer because everything is measured very precisely All right so the reason why it's very important to achieve the creaming method which you're gonna see next what we're gonna add next is because you want a very light and airy texture towards the end so by achieving the creaming method that's exactly what you're gonna get All right, at this point, I'm ready to start sifting my dry ingredients. And with that, I'm going to start off by grabbing a sifter. Start with sifting the flour. This is very, it's, it's a very important step to always take because not only will sifting remove any unwanted, let's say, particles, it will also help with slightly fluff, fluffing up your final product. So what I did was quickly sifting the flour and then I'm going to add in my spice mix that I made at the very beginning. I'm gonna add in, let's say, two heaping spoonfuls, let's say around 10 grams. I'm gonna sift that through. And then what I'm gonna add next is some baking soda and baking powder. And this is gonna help combine all the ingredients together very nicely and give us some rise. What I'm gonna add at the very end is just a pinch of salt. I always urge adding a pinch of salt into any um, sweet good because it will start by bringing out all those flavors. So what I have over here is my uh, dry ingredients already sifted. What I'm gonna add to my wet mixture is some coffee together with some vanilla. All right, so the very last step is to fold together all the ingredients. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to completely remove my bowl from my mixing machine, put it down onto my surface. What I'm gonna do is grab my spatula that I had before, mix everything together, and start by folding. And this is a process that you always want to keep in mind. You always want to fold your dry ingredients into your wet ingredients, just because you don't want to end up with a very tough mixture. So kind of visually dividing my dry ingredients into three parts and folding everything together very lightly. And with folding, what you're doing is kind of taking the mixture from below and bringing it up to the top while moving your bowl around. Just gonna keep on doing this in three parts until you end up with your batter. I'm 
so so my batter is done I'm just folding it just until I make sure that all of my ingredients have been saturated with the wet ingredients and everything looks homogenous. I do not want to jeopardize the fact that you're going to overmix just because overmixing will produce a very tough end result. Right? So that's it on that. What I'm going to do is I'll bring over my lined tins right next to me. I'm going to grab two spoons to start scooping in the mixture. So you don't want to overfill your tin, you just want to add just enough for it to reach the top. Keep in mind you've got some eggs in there, you've got some baking soda and baking powder, so your end result should be quite fluffy. You could always do the scooping process using an ice cream scoop. Um, I just like using spoons. You could always adapt to however you want to. So what I also did before starting to mix everything together is I preheated my oven. That's a very important step just because you don't want to add your already mixed batter into a very cold oven you're gonna end up with a very flat end result. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is quickly pop them in the oven. Don't worry about leveling them out. They're gonna do their own thing in the oven. So you really don't wanna waste any more time. Just pop them right into the oven and let them bake. All right, so I've had my cupcakes in my oven for 15 minutes. I'm gonna pull them out for now. It might take longer in your oven. It might take a little less time. So you need to assess how long you need and how you can tell whether or not your cupcakes have finished cooking is when you press right down in the middle, they spring right back up. If you do insert a skewer right in the middle, there should be no crumbs on the skewer. So what I'm gonna do is set them aside to rest and we're gonna work on our cream cheese frosting. All right, everyone. So I already have my uh, cupcakes resting on the side. It's gonna take around the same time that I was cooking for. So if you cooked it for 15 minutes, you wanna cook it for that long or cool it down for that long or even longer. While that happens, what we're gonna work on is our cream cheese frosting. For our cream cheese frosting, what we're gonna need is some cream cheese, some butter, some icing sugar, and a pinch of salt. It's very simple with ingredients, but it's very technical with technique-wise. So what you wanna make sure of is you've got a paddle on hand together with a whisk. We're gonna start off by using a paddle and finish off by using our whisk. So we're just gonna grab some cream cheese, put it right in together with our butter. Empty that all out into your mixer and start the machine slightly and mix everything together. So same goes here as well. You really want to help your machine out by scraping down the edges of the bowl. Just to make sure that everything gets a nice and even mix throughout. And then keep your machine going. All 
All right, so what I have right now is my cream cheese and my butter that are completely mixed together. What I'm gonna do is slowly and gradually add in my icing sugar, just a bit at a time. So we're just gonna keep on doing this until the full amount of icing sugar that we see over here is in the bowl itself. All right, so we are at the stage where we're gonna switch out our paddle attachment and use our whisk attachment. And you wanna make sure that you got all of that mixture from your paddle attachment down. You don't wanna lose any of that. So you're gonna put it back into the mixture itself, scrape down your spatula, and then switch out by using your whisk. With that, we're gonna add one small pinch of salt, very small pinch of salt to bring out all of those flavors. Same goes here. I'm just going to scrape down the edges, but I wanna really go in because this is the last time we're gonna scrape down the edges. You wanna make sure you collect all of those corner dry pieces back into the mixer to get it whipped up nice and smooth. So I'm using the whisk itself to kind of scrape off the edges because you want everything into your bowl rather than in your equipment. All right, so you don't wanna rush this. It's very important to whip it up to the proper texture. So if it needs some more whipping, you can keep on going. I think it's gonna need a few more minutes and then a quick blast in the fridge to kind of solidify. I have been using room temperature butter and room temperature ingredients in general. So it's very important to do the same at home. Uh, you don't wanna risk having uh, pieces of butter into your mixture. You want it to be nice and smooth. Once we're done with that, I'm going to actually put it in our piping bag. All right, so this is a good, let's say, texture that I've reached to. I am going to put it in the fridge because it is quite warm in here. So we're gonna put it in the fridge for a little amount of time, whip it up one last time, and then we are ready to frost our cupcakes. All right, so what I have in my piping bag right here is our cream cheese frosting, and what's left to do is simply frost our cupcakes and what I have fitted over here is a star tip nozzle to give us a nice and beautiful finish so we're simply just going to not frost the full cupcake but just right in the middle just like so very easy and what we're gonna finish off with is just adding a sprinkle of our pumpkin spice mix. Here we have our first final dish of the day, which is our pumpkin spice latte cupcakes made with our spice mix from scratch. Stay tuned, we're gonna be making our next spice mix from scratch.
for our second dish of the day, what we're gonna do is make our base of our homemade spice mix from scratch. So for that, what we're gonna need is some cumin, some garlic powder, some paprika, some oregano, cayenne pepper, dried thyme, pepper, and salt. This spice mix is actually called an everything spice mix and it goes with literally anything. So we're gonna start by adding all of these dried spices to our bowl. And get them mixed together. Just gonna set these aside. and get them mixed together very thoroughly. So this everything spice mix can be used with literally anything. So I'm gonna pair it today with a roasted cauliflower dish that is so yummy. You can use as a main dish or even as a side dish. Just gonna get that mixed together very thoroughly. Those bigger clumps of spices needs to kind of break down into smaller pieces. So this everything spice mix can be made in bulk and stored for a very, let's say, for one month in your dry store and can be used with anything. You could use it as a breakfast condiment for your eggs. It can be used with literally anything. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna grab our cauliflower and get that prepped with some olive oil. You want a good amount of olive oil just to ensure that your spice mix does actually stick on your cauliflower, get that mixed through. You wanna coat every single floret of cauliflower with the oil. And then what you're gonna do next is you're gonna grab a good amount of spice mix onto your cauliflower and get that mixed through. So that nice and vibrant red in color is really coming through into our cauliflower. What I'm gonna do is put this right onto a lined baking sheet, spread it right over Make sure you get those pieces of cauliflower spread out. You don't want a huge chunk or clump all onto one side. You want an even cooking all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is pop this into a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius for about 15 more or less. So my timer went off on my cauliflower, so I'm just gonna pull that out and set that aside for now. And what we're actually gonna work on right now is our dressing that's gonna go right on top of the cauliflower. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that. So what we have for our cauliflower dressing is some minced garlic, a bit of salt, some tahini, some honey, black pepper, lemon juice, some water, and later on to garnish, we got some pomegranate seed and some dill. So I'm gonna go right ahead and put this all in my bowl. Just a good pinch of salt right over here all of the tahini right goes right in gonna 
gonna go in with a good healthy squeeze of honey this is to taste so if you like it more onto the sweeter side you could add some more I really like having that sweet and salty balance so I'm just gonna add a bit of some cracked black pepper all of that lemon juice and just a little bit of water to start with to dilute the mixture so I'm gonna go ahead and mix this all together and usually with uh, the mix of tahini and lemon juice you'll notice that your tahini seizes up a bit and this is normal all you have to do is just add a bit more of the water to kind of let it go back to a diluted state so I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this all together So that's it on our dressing. I'm gonna set this aside and start with plating our cauliflower dish. So I'm gonna grab my plate, grab all of the cauliflower and put it on our plate. Right in the middle. And you could stack this all on top of each other. It's gonna look nice and elevated that way. All right, so I'm gonna go and add in my dressing all the way around, just like so. just to make sure every bite has a bit of the dressing. Lastly, we're gonna garnish with some fresh pieces of dill. And there we have it. This is our second dish of the day where we actually used our spice mix, our everything spice mix to roast our cauliflower. And there we have it, our two final dishes made together with our spice mixes from scratch. We started off the day with our pumpkin spice mix to make our pumpkin spice latte cupcakes and our everything spice mix to make our cauliflower roasted cauliflower paired with tahini sauce i'll see you guys next time on from scratch